right the mask in their culture in, in a lot of these traditional cultures becomes a channel of unveiling revealing I see. of accessing higher ontological levels so in a way it has an iconic role hello and welcome to why are we talking about rabbits that's this podcast i'm john hears i'm talking to folks out there who may be thinking oh this country's getting weird but really maybe the whole world we do heavy things here but we do them lightly philosophy theology and other stuff including immersive experiences in overseas locations. We try to figure out what's going on using this type of wisdom. If there is any in it, we try to share it with you. This is Watar. Why are we talking about rabbits? My name is John Hears, and this is episode 46. What are the artistic and spiritual implications of the mask? With Father Silouan Justiniano. So who's Father Silouan before he comes on? He's a monk who is an iconographer, who is a priest, who is one of the most learned people I know, and also my godson. And if you know his work, you know that he is talented. But he wouldn't say that. Father Silouan also lives in, and finds his meaning in, an, in a monastery, an Orthodox monastery in New York, called St. Dionysius the Areopagite. Yes, that's a Rokor monastery. His archimandrite right there, the abbot, is Maximus Weimer. And Father, well, just listen to him. Let's bring him on right now on episode 46. Hello, Father. How are you doing, John? It's, I'm uh, good. It's good to see you again. So what are it's you thinking? Good. What are you uh, thinking up there in New York these days? How's life? Uh, life is good. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, trying to behave and not, not do anything stupid, but, uh, you know, <laughs> we're, we're actually, the weather is beautiful, you know, where the, the, the spring is, is kicking in and, uh, a lot of pollen, but our community is doing well. And, uh, we just actually had a liturgy this morning. And so we're, we're, we're being You're treated working. good by, by God. So thank God. Yes. Yes. Isn't that liturgy? The Greek is work or something, right? That's right. The people's the people's work. Yeah. People's work. Yeah. Liturgia. That's Liturgia. right. Liturgia. Yeah. The and, work. Uh, the work of the people. Yeah. Christos uh, vos cresci to you. Christ is risen to vos you. Cresci. That's right. Indeed, yeah, is risen. So talk to me about America for a second. You're in it. You have people coming from outside the monastery. Masks. Like. Yeah. Well, you know, the funny thing is that part. Part of, I just mentioned that we now have a thriving Greek aspect to our community, Greek Greek dimension. A lot of people have come uh, to us due to partly to the problem with the whole COVID thing, especially with the mask situation. Because as you know, in some of the church communities, they uh, implemented heavy, heavy parameters and mm-hmm. restrictions uh, in light of what was going on. And um, it caused a lot of confusion in some parish communities. And um, consequently, um, some people in our vicinity started coming to us because the way we played it was um, initially when the, you know, when was it, March? Uh, March, when a, they year, started. Yeah, a year yeah. in some, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When they started, like, you know, uh, mandating the specific, you know, uh, restrictions with how many people to have in a gathering, so on and so forth. Um, we we started um, initially with uh, restricting the amount of people that would have in a given Sunday. Mm-hmm. But that very quickly fizzled out. We only did that for like around two weeks or, or three of that. Just two and or three. then, okay. yeah, and then we just basically let it go, and we of course put signs up because we have a gentleman that is uh, a policeman, and so he gave us signs signage to put up about mm-hmm. you know specific you know regulations that are commonly the the, the 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 usual kind of restrictions that you would expect in most places. In any case, we put that up and we put masks and we put like, you know, um, the sanitizer on a shelf in the hall. And so we left it up to people to do whatever they 
felt was necessary. It was mm -hmm. up to them. Uh, we asked clergy, we did not wear the masks because we thought, well, we're liturgizing. We're actually symbolically conveying a specific message to put a mask on. It's just, it clashes with what we, we are, it is that we're supposed to be conveying as, as, you know, uh, images of Christ and, you know, mm -hmm. as serving uh, as conveyors of higher things. And it would have been just too much of a distraction. And so, um, and so we were moderate about it. We did not, and we did not enter into political discussions about mask wearing mm -hmm. or stuff like that. And so it created an environment that, um, It, it it was like a, an oasis, so to speak, of normalcy in the sea of confusion, <laughs> basically. I see, I see. And that that um it, that the word got around, and some people started coming to us. And so, ironically, in the moment of crisis, it became a moment of flourishing for our community. So, as and, an iconographer, though, and a priest, someone um. Well, I know you're well versed in the idea of icon of image, yeah, and uh, what is reality? What are layers of reality? What is truth? What is the spirit? So, what did the mask do to us when we I, wore it? What's the aesthetic I, of the mask? What is right. it? Does it lead us away from beauty, or what is it? Is it neutral? I, I think I think it's a comp. It's a very big topic, as you know. I mean, and our current situation is sort of like one small sliver of a whole history of humankind when it comes to mask wearing mm -hmm. <laughs> because i mean i think the oldest mask that we have discovered the archaeological record has in the museum is like nine thousand years old wow. and but you know but documentation of mask wearing extends to millennia i mean you have like cave paintings documenting mask wearing so that's like forty five thousand years ago i mean so the mask wearing goes back to the you know the beginnings of humanity and so so you you can't you can't speak of, of the mask in just one way as sure. with most most symbols is polyvalent. It has multiple meanings depending on context and depending on the culture and the function that is that is serving. The first thing that we have to keep in mind is that there is a positive and a negative side to the to the mask. That was my question, actually. Okay. It, it, yes. Can it? Is it just a fly trap so I don't get a germ? Can I just <laughs> literally just say no? It's just cloth. <laughs> If no, it, no, it's, it's more that. than just cloth. I mean, okay, right. I mean, you could, you could, you could uh, uh, condense it in our current situation to just a purely medical precaution, mm -hmm. and that's all but, it is. But, but, but we know that given that it has caused so much tension between sectors of our society that it is more than just that not Because a mandate i wore on my is, finger it is conveying a specific message and different people are interpreting it in different ways so there's like narratives of like you were saying before interpretations of reality what what is it that we're confronting now how is it that we are mm -hmm. uh in who are we to believe about what is going on and depending on how you interpret these, uh, these com complex situations, it would determine how, your attitude about the mask. See, so that there, there is that. So, so inevitably, inevitably, inevitably is going to have a symbolic dimension where it conveys more than just the bottom line medical precaution. Does that make the, the mask in your mind religious so i think about france and the hajj the uh, uh, the hijab so like oh, yeah. A, yeah, yeah. A hijab covers too right yes yes Is something about covering that's related to something sacred and religious that makes it uh, yes. more more um electrified and more uh, controversial right. is that what's going on 
Right. Because, listen, mass is dealing with the human face. When you're dealing with the human face, you're already touching on fundamental questions about who we know or what we think we are and how we approach our our communal exchange and our relationship to the sacred mm -hmm. and our relationship to the political. And all those things are intertwined. Okay. So first of all, getting back to the whole like four, you know, millennia of mask wearing, we got to first keep in mind that the masks came into existence as a vehicle of contact with the sacred. I see. Okay. So, so, and of course, in, in, in ancient traditional cultures, some of which, you know, some aspects of which we still encounter today, you have no separation between religion and, 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 and the political, for example, mm -hmm. and or the folk and the, you know, you have different dimensions of like, uh, of, of ritual, you know, there's, there's a cent the central uh, rites the mystery rites and then you know then then you have folk culture or whatever mm -hmm. but they they all they all navigate in the same mythological um imaginal world mm -hmm. that is given culture has a way of telling its about its origins and its is 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 uh connection to to the divine and mm -hmm. so so the mask uh for example uh, you've been to africa I don't know if you've been to some of the festivals that they have in West Africa where they use the mask as a pivotal component. Pivotal. Uh, you know, every and time, so, every time. And so, you know, to for you to be wearing a mask, you have to be initiated to wear a mask. Mm -hmm. You have to go through specific uh, uh, ascetical practices of like you, you have to stay away from your wife for a period of time. You can eat specific foods. You have to, you know, so that you ha it's this you have to prepare spiritually for you to take on the mask. Of course, you would have been initiated already. You would have been trained by an elder. And then you would have the knowledge of what the mask represents within the community in terms of their mythology, in terms of their ancestors, and in terms of the specific moral codes that you're supposed to uh, live by. So the design, the form that these masks take they're very abstract and the symbolism the way that the patterns are, uh, are you know uh, they come together uh either refer to uh cosmic spirits uh natural uh phenomena like animals mm -hmm. or the ancestors of the village uh -huh. And depending on how they interact, they're basically either reenacting aspects of their myth or they are conveying specific messages about, uh, you know, regarding valor or uh, social conduct uh, and to to basically didactically, you know, educate the, 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 the villagers. Okay. And but one very important thing about this mask wearing is that. You are, when you take the mask on, when you put the mask on, you are entering into the spirit world. Okay. You, it, the, the mask becomes a channel through which you transcend your immediate temporal and sensible reality. And you are. So then, I didn't do that at Publix yesterday when I, at, at the grocery store, <laughs> when I wore my mask yesterday, or did I? <laughs> Well, no, but really, yeah, though, keep going with that. Debate. We'll, we'll we'll get into that. We'll we'll enter into that. Okay, I want to. So hear. so so the thing is, in these kind of cultures, and this is one amongst other traditional cultures where you also have in Bali, you have basically the same idea where you have uh, the reenactment of like uh, the the battle between good and evil. And these are also seasonal kind of, they, they happen in specific seasons from mm -hmm. you know, when the winter is passing away and spring is coming, so on and so forth. And so you have this dance that takes place where they don on the masks of like this sorceress that represents evil and this like lion that represents good. And so 
And then in the process, then the mask wearers go into trance and people from within the audience go into trance. So the whole event connects the community to their ancestors and to the cosmic world and to the sacred, their, their understanding of the sacred. What I want to say is that within their context, that's a positive use of the mask. I see. It's not. That's why. That's what I'm emphasizing is that the mask is not purely a demarcator of obs- obscuring. Where does that come from? Because I the, think a lot the, of us think that. Right. The mask in their culture, in, in a lot of these traditional cultures, becomes a channel of unveiling, revealing. I see. Of accessing higher ontological levels. So in a way, it has an iconic role. Okay? So, so, and, and, and eventually... In iconic here, the, you mean even in the, in the Orthodox tradition, but iconic means a lot of things, but... Yes. It, yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, see what you I, mean. It's a window. It's a way in. Exactly. It's, it's not necessarily... Exactly. It's, it's not obfuscation. It's exactly. not... Exactly. It's not. It is, it is actually opening the doors... Mm-hmm. of perception sorry to put it that in such a tacky way but you know you know what i mean so uh it is opening a channel towards uh a spirit world that otherwise we rarely come into t- contact with mm-hmm. so 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 um and their depictions are stylized their depictions are you know um are symbolic and so, hence the parallel between the mask and the icon. And one thing, one other connection with the icon is that we have to bear in mind that the icon tradition has uh, a connection to the Greco-Roman painting that was being done in Egypt. For example, you know that I, I, image of uh, Christ Pantocrator from Sinai done mm-hmm. in encaustic? Okay, that famous image. Describe that, that, is, that. Describe that for people listening. What made it famous? Um, it, it is one of the earliest depictions of Christ that became standard as the way we depict Christ okay, and the, right. what we recognize the, him as, the, you know, his the features. Cr- the Christ icon that's usually right at the top of any of the dome of any Orthodox church. That, that Exactly. That or at the right the, of the iconostasis. Yes. Keep so going. The, so that image. That image basically has, it's a, an encaustic panel painting and it is the same kind of pictorial tradition that you have in the Fayum mummy portraits from the Mm -hmm. uh, late Roman period, you know, the Romans when they were, you know, uh, became part of the Egyptian world, they Mm -hmm. brought along their pictorial uh, traditions. And so they picked up the Egyptian uh, funerary practices Mm -hmm. um, and that, but then incorporated into it some of their, their, pictorial practices so the egyptians would uh on the uh coffin of the mummy they would do a mask representing the deceased okay and uh, this would be in three in three-dimensional relief form i see okay. eventually the romans replaced the mask with a panel portrait of the deceased and this panel portraits, the Fayum portraits, they are famous. They're like uh, at least like nine thousand or something like Check that. Check them out in the it, podcast. I'll put yeah, a link. Yeah, um, they uh, they became uh, a they're like a transitional moment between late antiquity pictorial practices and the icon. Oh, wow. and the i the icon of Christ Pantocrator in Sinai exemplifies that transitional period of uh, picking up from the Romans that, and then eventually that will transition into what we n- now consider more of the traditional uh, post-iconoclasm iconographic uh, forms. But the reason why I bring that up is because the Fayou mummy portraits, when you look at the background, they have gold and sometimes they have gold wreaths. Uh-huh. And so these people are represented as immortal, although they have passed away. Mm-hmm. And so the mask of the Egyptians transitions into the portrait, the iconic portrait of the Romans, and eventually to the icon. 
So there is a there is an interesting mm -hmm. connection between the mask and traditional cultures and the icon, as we said before. And, 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 so, and it's that and it's the passageway connection. It's a connection. Exactly, it's exactly. a connection. Right. It's a connection of transparency or that which you can go through, not yes. that which blocks. Exactly. So because one, you you brought up the uh, the problem in, in, in France with the Muslim practice of the women covering themselves. Right. Uh -huh. That's right. What, what the hijab, they call it hijab. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so uh, which uh, brings it to the notion of veiling. OK. Mm -hmm. um, which, again, relates to any form of symbolism, including the icon. And uh, the, for example, the iconostas in an Orthodox church. Okay. Okay. You are obscuring, so to speak, or hiding something. In the in the case of the iconostas, also in the in the the way that the women veil themselves in in, in the Muslim culture, mm -hmm. um, but that hiding designates something precious, something sacred, something not to be handled, not to be possessed by those who are not supposed to, you know, touch holy things. Okay. So, so while it is covering at the same time, it reveals a splendor. It, it makes manifest that what you're dealing with is something to be respected, revered, to not approach with carelessness. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, what makes it uh, even more interesting in the iconostas is that you have icons on the iconostas. So, so the icons further reveal dimensions of what's actually happening behind the iconostas. Okay. So anyways, so hence the polyvalence of the mask where it is both something that reveals, something that hides. But consequently, when you are not, when you're no longer dealing with the mask as a vehicle to access the sacred, then it degenerates. Um, and then you could use it purely as a way of obfuscation. See. Of, 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 of obscuring in order to hide and not to reveal your true self. Hence the thief's mask. Which is not leading to the sacred, but instead. It is cutting, it's cutting off access to true revelation or true rela relational exchange. It's opaque. It's opaque and or empty. For example, in yeah, light, empty. Mm -hmm. It's you know, better than in, okay. In, yeah. in, in, in light of the icon, for example, in iconography, it is uh, important that when you depict the saint, you depict them uh, with his face fully revealed. His face shows, his complete face, right? Mm -hmm. The depictions of demons, for example, and the devil, they are usually a silhouette and they're dark mm -hmm. and their features are either muddled or you can't really make them out. And they are then an image of uh, an ontological emptiness or lack of access to the divine light. And so the features then become uh, you don't know what they're up to. So they're they're hiding. They're like, they're in darkness. And so their face, you could refer to them as a mask. Whereas the face of the saints, you could refer to them as a countenance. Insofar as they reveal the fullness of their person. Like getting back to what you were asking in the beginning of, you know, mm -hmm. the, the first question. So it's a revelatory, it's a, re it's a revelation of the self. The face becomes 
a, a revealing of your 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 inner person. Right, the sacred. So then, is the is this also why the icon, at least in the in the in the Eastern Christian tradition, is is that why it's always a, a frontal with with open eyes or at least eyes that are that are clearly um, um, evident, uh, right? And it's right. not either, profile, a, right? It's either it's either frontal or quarter view, in order to make a connection with the viewer. Because the idea is that you're to commune with the person that is depicted. They're revealing themselves to you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you're to do the same. So there is a transparency of like access of uh, inner subjective uh, exchange uh, relationship. And so uh, which is to facilitate prayer. Okay. And so um, the the negative forces on the other hand generally not in every you know single you know case there is a tendency for example like in the depictions of uh of of judas for example he's usually in profile um and and because he 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 is he is not connecting with the viewer in his act of betrayal and and his his act of betrayal becomes sort of like a a symbol of um, of 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 his deception to Christ, and that's why that makes sense. Yeah, so, that's why he's yeah, away or in right, portraiture. He's right. He's in profile. And there is also a depiction of the devil in um, in Venice in the St. Mark's Cathedral, where the Lord is depicted in. Um, being tempted, you know, his temptation during mm -hmm. the 40 days, you know, mm -hmm. at the end of his 40 day fast. And the devil is depicted dark with like, you know, you barely could see like his face. Mm -hmm. And then at the very end, when he's defeated, he is cast down and he's in profile and he becomes even more flattened than like and obscured. And so hence, you know, the symbolism of, 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 falling into non-being so to speak yeah empty you know emptiness mm -hmm. um and so also keep in mind that like when saint i think it was saint mark saint macarius the great discovered the skull of the of the pagan priest and the pagan the skull spoke to him and said please you know pray for us who are in hades and uh because when your prayers uh you know are are recited uh, we have a respite in hell. We experience a momentary uh, light and we could see each other once again. Uh -huh. So Hades is in a, a darkness where you cannot see each other face to face. And, and prayer brings about a momentary uh, respite, yeah, uh, solace. And it, it, it enables the, those who are inhabiting Hades to see each other and be relieved from the suffering of isolation. And so, so, so the mass then could be, in the negative sense, a barrier that isolates and thwarts access to relationality. The mask has more meaning than to stop the germs. Exactly. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Because you know how you, uh, I'm going to probably get this wrong, but there is a um, apotropaic kind of symbols or, or objects. They're things that are uh, displayed to ward off evil. Mm -hmm. Okay. So like the Gorgons, for example, you know, those three, like, you know, what's a two immortal. And then there was a Medusa who was like, you know, mortal and, you know, and Persis like, you know, and slayed her or whatever. Anyways, um, the Gorgons in the, in, in the Greek, uh, uh, what an old uh, Greek, period, I love it. Do it. Right. They, they, they would, they would basically put these Gorgons in like in buildings and like, you know, in architectural, you know, facades and stuff like that as a way of warding off evil. And uh, similarly, uh, um, there is another, uh, you know, uh, demonic looking like face that they use in, in Hindu temples at the very mm, top. I've seen it. Mm -hmm. You see? Okay. And so that's another award you have in, in, in the medieval, 
you know, uh, oh. Gothic cathedrals. You have the gargoyles. gargoyles. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, right. so these are like apotropaic kind of like you know forms. They they ward off evil, right? And so masks have also served an apotropaic kind of purpose. And in our current culture, although we're totally secular, I mean, not totally, but uh, predominantly secular, mm -hmm. uh, in our the way we're in, in the narratives are being played out. In our current situation, uh, the mask ser serves an apotropaic uh, 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 function yes, psychologically. It does because because uh, whether you're on the left or the right, everybody knows that there are different opinions in the medical community as to the efficacy of a mask. Mm -hmm. But then it becomes a symbol of something else when people wear it. But it depends on who wears it and what they attribute to that mask. But regardless, I think in the current context, it has in a way become more like of an apotropaic kind of like uh, device where people are acknowledging that there is a problem. Right. And for us to become more attentive of the problem and to sort of like, in a way, be uh, mentally not like, sort of like have the upper hand over it, the mass serves as a vehicle to help us cope with the ambiguities of the situation. It, so, so, is that a coping a good thing or is that a weakness that people need to overcome by realizing something like, now I'm just saying words, I yeah. don't know if I even believe this, saying something like God is with us, Emmanuel, take the mask off already. Yeah, is but the coping I think, dangerous? I think it's, I think it's, um, it is potentially, some people interpret it as potentially dangerous because it, when you cut off re, the, the relational, like you don't address the, um, because, okay, if you are fixated on the physical mm -hmm. and you're not dealing with the relational and spiritual dimension of man, then you create a social situation where uh, uh, mentally, psychologically, uh, uh, people, uh, given that they're not relating in a normal level mm -hmm. the way we are meant to, you could say that it makes people more vulnerable to 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 be manipulated i see because yeah that's uh, right. that's because right. then then um it becomes a dynamic of freedom uh who you know some people say um given that you've already obscured it to a degree identity, then other forms of identity could be slipped in to compensate. So we're already like in a, like you could see the use of masks, perhaps, I don't know, I, I don't necessarily agree with this, but you could see it, one interpretation goes as a transitional, vulnerable uh, dynamic Mm -hmm. that then facilitates the implementation of devices or methods that infringe on our freedoms mm -hmm. by it's supplying like uh, tools of identity that prior to the mass, we would have actually be more apprehensive towards them. Mm -hmm. But now, given that we've gone through the trauma of the mask, then we feel like we need them. All right, let's break for a minute, if we can, just for a second, for a commercial. And this commercial is a self-indulgent plug for a book produced by First Things Foundation, but it's written by me and it's a novel. If you like to read and you like to read fiction, this book is for you. It's called Three Souls. Right? And basically, this is a book that tries to get into the heart of the matter concerning love, truth, right, death. There's a whole revolutionary moment in this book. We meet three people, Rafaela, the most sultry woman in Harlem. We meet David, 
raised on large dollops of self-esteem, right? And trying to figure out his life according to this most beautiful woman. And then there's Mitchell Micken, the wonderkind, the math science intellect, the guy who is filled with power, but also filled with a deep sense of dislocation. Mitchell Micken, David and Raffaella. All of them, how should we say, caught in a maelstrom of passion, revolution, and divine ascent. Three souls. On Amazon, check out the links. Back to our episode. It's the process of, of breaking down the spiritual muscles. Yes, right. In, in order to introduce muscles, but perhaps uh muscle spiritual muscles that are for our, our degradation or will actually right, our spiritual damage right so so damage. that's one interpretation i mean that's i tend to be very cautious about narratives that seem too um Right now, the people uh, listen. You're like, this is he's watching yeah, what he's saying. They, like that's it. that tend to be too um, confident as to their truth value when there isn't enough evidence. To evidence so here could be spiritual, physical, right. or whatever. and so so therefore, then you are you you you're left with what you started with ambiguity and an issue of trust okay so 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 then let me present another sure. dimension um i don't like masks right i don't i would prefer not to wear a mask um I, I, nevertheless if i have to you know I have, if i if i if i'm gonna go somewhere i'm not going to imp impose myself on somebody else because of my position about my attitude about masks. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? I mean, I, I think of course, I'm, I'm, that's, I'm that's trying to put my finger on, 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 on the, because there is, I believe, an undercurrent that tends to be ignored by the ideological surface that goes on. And I think a lot of it has to do with trusting God and... Trusting whether, God. Whether, either way, either way, you, end, say, you, you end say. up you end up with an issue of trust. And who do you trust? Does this make the worry about masking on either side? Do we, at that point, is it just nonsensical? Should we just not worry about it? Wear it or not wear it doesn't matter. See, I, I'm not I, there, I, Father. I, I, I good. No, go I would ahead, just say ahead. I'm. I, I'm not there, because there's a, a type of illness that that springs up among people who are wearing masks and talking to each other with masks on all day long. And when none of them are actually in danger of being sick. No, I, I, I agree. I mean, I don't, I think they, that's a legitimate, that's a legitimate problem. I mean, and I think, and then did you have also people who, who cop an attitude because you're not wearing a mask? Because if you don't wear a mask, then you're automatically judged because you're not being, conscientious about like the problem so, so you know the, let me the, give the, you the let me problem. give you a quandary so it's let like me... it's but i think i think extremes me is what I, I guess what i'm trying to say and that's what we have to be careful about let you me know, give you let me give you a, a, a question that might help to illustrate and it'll be tough the answer will be easy i think but i think it'll help to illustrate something so let's say that this pandemic went on but let's just, I don't know. Let's just say it was, quote, worse. I know people died. I get it. But let's just say it's like 60% of us are dying. Right. right. Some number. And, it, and, and masks proved to be, yeah, oh, look, those helped. The 40% probably wore masks. Something like that. Masks are efficacious. Right. And there's a monk or a nun or 
somebody that we know in our tradition, or, or even if I don't care what tradition, but the point is, is we'll use you as an example. In the tradition, this particular person was amazing. Like you hear about the old Christians during the time of the Roman, uh, the Byzantine um, pandemics. They're going into your house, they're helping people. And there's one particular person who's clearly just mystical in their ability to do it. And they just help a ton of people and right. they do it in a mask and they do it for like a year. And I don't know, they're martyred or something. And then they become a saint. Would it be for you a proper icon to paint them in their mask, having done all of these deeds of wonder? <laughs> That's a funny <laughs> question, man. That's a good question. Well, listen, I don't think that it would be like the best of approaches to make the central icon him wearing the mask but i would yes include let's say in the niches like around the central image uh, of the saint i would include him doing the work with the mask as part of his life so you think as the church have eventually, it in the synaxarian <laughs> okay so the church would you know? <laughs> produce the tradition the narrative would produce at some point some revelation about the mask within the, the narrative of that particular icon I think so. I think so because it's just. It's but part not of the life. frontal. Not the frontal. It, it's not. I wouldn't. I wouldn't think it would be. I, I. I don't think it would be, the primary icon. I. I. I because it, it just. But I again, I wouldn't be dogmatizing on that. You wouldn't. You don't. I wouldn't be dogmatizing on that. All right. That which gets us back to the whole question, which is. Different people are in different levels and developments and in, in their development of faith, in their growth of faith. Okay. And so we have to be careful because we could either be virtue signaling from the left or the right and being condemnatory towards people. Mm -hmm. We're not, they're not there. And then we're thinking, oh, I'm the man or I'm the woman. I have, I'm, I'm in the good side of things because I have this specific position about the mask wearing. And then those who do not stand with me are on the bad side. And so then it becomes, it becomes problematic spiritually in that sense. And so, yes, there are problems in multiple levels of this question. And I think that's why it is very important not to turn it into a topic of contention or a uh, situation where it becomes divisive within the parish community or within you know like the family or whatever you know what i'm saying because different people are in different different stages of spiritual development and you can't impose on them what you consider to be you know uh, very accessible to you it's like in the early church with like you know the meats offered to sacrifices or you know like the the the, the meats offered in temples you know and like and 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 how or whether you could eat meat or, or, or you could only eat vegetables and questions like that that arose in the early church community. Mm -hmm. And St. Saint, Saint Paul put love as the primary, you know, vetting stone of what you are, you know, how you are to determine what you're going to do in those circumstances. Yep. Yep. Let, let, here's one last. Let's do one more because we've been talking. Okay. So I, I think you are, you won't say it, but you're an expert on I icons, but also on art. You studied a lot. You you participate in that. You read. Uh, I'm going to say his name wrong. Ananda Kumaswamy. Uh huh. He's an interesting character. Uh, yeah, born 1877, uh, died 1947. He was the curator uh, of uh, the I think Mohammedan and 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 Oriental art in in the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston for many years. Yeah. Um, anyway, so he, he, uh, great, great uh, historian, art historian, art historian, historian. Right? yeah. So, using some of that, help us with this question, maybe to end. Um, if this same pandemic, now I've been to these places, what we call the old world on this podcast. So, the old world yeah. is sort of pre enlightenment, right? So, uh, what I think is happening in our new world in America as we try to figure out the masks is we're using. A new world paradigms, which are essentially scientific, materialistic. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So given what you know about art, if this is an old world, I'm saying a thoroughly old world culture, that they thoroughly see that there's something going on and there's a pandemic and people are dying. 
Does the mask wearing take on a different nature? Do we have different arguments? Is it not even the same thing? Uh, I was in Sierra Leone, but the problem is they're becoming very westernized, but masks for them to wear them to protect themselves was kind of a joke. No one was doing it. And, and there wasn't really a discussion. Some people wore them, but mostly to avoid fines. Is it a different conversation in the old world because they're using different sort of spiritual principles? Or what do you think about that? Or is that just sort of a silly question? No, I think, I think it does change the dynamic. I mean, um, I, I think, um, I mean, you mentioned Kumar Swami in the batch of, this you know the the batch and i think i think he would say is that that yes it would change definitely the question because they are looking at things from uh from their uh, for a more of a metaphysical set of assumptions right. rather than a purely uh scientific uh framework and the problem though is you know um, uh, and this is where I like sort of like part ways with 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 Kumar Swami is that we have to be careful with like over over simplifying like the the traditional um context because as much as we have to be careful with over castigating the the Western scientific. Mm -hmm. world okay so so we have to like navigate towards towards some resolution um and i think the resolution comes in a truly balanced of like you know union without confusion or division so to speak yeah. between metaphysical principles and the you know an acknowledgement of the material veracity reality. of material reality, right? Mm -hmm. So, so, so you Isn't could that have Christ. Is that Christ? Exactly, you, exactly, you, right? Uh -huh. Is yeah, yeah. God a man, right? So, so that is like our vetting stone for all forms of knowledge. So we have to keep that 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 balance. So, so yes, you could have like in the context of of like you know Africa or other traditional cultures that they wouldn't really, because they have their own methods of dealing with the problem. Correct. You see, there, and For but sure. their methods of dealing with the problem could take into account, like, you know, uh, killing a chicken every, you know, every day. For sure. To appease, to appease the village, you know, uh, you know, spirits or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and, and that's, that's their way of doing it. But, uh, we have our own rituals, you know, of, of you know, uh, of dealing with the anxieties of what we're dealing with now. But like, um, but whether here or there, we have to be careful and say, well, the fact that we're so advanced doesn't mean that our advanced methods are actually delivering us from other problems within the pandemic of, 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 uh, relationality and you know the fact that they're in a traditional perspective that doesn't mean that them practicing their folk methods are that's not necessarily the most effective way of dealing with the problem either see. you see and so that's like we have to be careful and uh, so um, but, it, but it's but it's also about telos it's about the purpose so i think the purpose let me, let me say this. I think the purpose that is implied in almost all Western activity, here again, enlightened activity, right. purpose has something to do with survival. And I just know in traditional societies, especially uh, I will say in Mali and West Africa, survival is important, of course, but it doesn't seem like, now Now you could argue biologically every, everybody wants to survive, I get that. But in terms of actual theology or in terms of actual, I would say like anthropological reality, you can see that people care less about survival and more about maybe union with God or something. And yeah, so I think, I think, yeah, in terms of principle, uh, you would have to actually, uh, I mean, you can't deny that 
you can't deny that. Uh, but but the, the thing is that what I would say is that you, you have to be careful not to um, romanticize yeah, that's right. poverty. I too. You know what I'm saying? Because, uh, uh, yeah, you know, sure. so, so, so it's like, yes, I mean, in terms of, in terms of 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 of, of uh, principles and the completeness of like a, a a worldview that is more complete, we have shrunk our our ontological framework. Yep. We have made it completely horizontal, and we have created. You mean our our being is only known to us through the horiz the horizon through things. On our on our plane, is that something uh, like, on our on our physiological yeah, biological. space time continuum or whatever? Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? As long as you could measure it, as long as you could like you know derive some mathematical like you know equation, then you know we're good because then we can manipulate the material and feel like we have you know control over our destiny right. in our physiological kind of like determinisms. You know mm -hmm. that we've you know uh created for ourselves as as the world picture but for for a traditional person no i mean for the traditional person there was the the physical the spirit world and then you know in, in more developed like you know uh, uh civilizations you had like uh something above the the middle realm of the spirits there, there was you had the deities you know what i'm saying so you have gradations of like different like a a chain of being, so to speak, you know, but never so, an anti metaphysic, never, a, 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 a always a meta, but you're right. I mean, the, 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 the predominant approach was the assumption that there is a higher realm. Right. And that, that we, we are to deal with our immediate reality <laughs> in light of uh, the the gods or you know the 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 absolute you know and so mm -hmm. the sacred and that that you can't extrapolate you can't take that away from you take that away from like a traditional society you don't have a traditional society I okay you know? i think that's so well said so, you know so so that's uh that's that's, that's old that's, that's old pivotal. world yes so um anyway so that um means uh, I guess we could wrap it up with like getting back to the mask that in the traditional society, there was more of a sense, which is, it relates to, you know, Kumar Swami is the sense that, that uh, the absolute revealed himself or itself manifested itself in, 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 in you know, manifest reality, our immediate uh, world uh, through um different masks yeah so so uh in our in our understanding um in the orthodox understanding uh it's like it's different slightly because in that context you have a, an abstract notion of deity hence hence the capacity for that that um, absolute to take on different personas, hence the different deities, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and the pantheon of like the different gods and like, so there are basically, you know, we move from, 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 from the Greek world to, to the Indian world. In the Indian world, uh, there are all the different manifestations of the Atman, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. of the higher like absolute self or you know and so um so 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 it doesn't really matter if you have thousands of deities because they're only vestiges of the true self okay for the orthodox understanding though the christian understanding is no the god is you know trinity he is hypostatic. Mm -hmm. He is personal and he became incarnate. And so the personal dimension then um, deals with the role of symbolism in a different way mm -hmm. where you do not have the posited 
personification of cosmic forces as masks of the divinity. What you have is individual persons who have become deified. And they become the channels through which you access God. They were there your peers that enable you or like help you with through their prayers to access your own deification. So the importance of the person and their their uniqueness and their countenance as revealing their deification, because like in the account of the saints, they shine, you know, it's often in the life of the saints where the 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 ascetic is dying, for example, and right prior to his death, his disciples encounter him with his face shining as the sun. Okay. And so his face, his the resplendence of his face becomes evidence of what has already taken place ontologically in his person. Mm -hmm. He has become deified, and then his radiance manifests this. Well, and so hence in uh, the icon, then you have the saint in, you know, you see his full face. Mm -hmm. And so, so this important, the importance of the individual person becomes sort of like, uh, not as emphasized in other cultures. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think it within monotheism in, in, in particular Christianity, you don't have the use of the mask in its sacred rites. Because, you know, it's true. That's true. They got rid Christians we, got rid exactly. of the mask. Because because the sake the, in the, the, the sacred rites of the pagans, you have the person identifying with the deity. And so their their um uh how their their appearance or their the conscious awareness of who they are in this temporal level becomes sacrificed for them to channel yeah, the divinity. Right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that that then well they lose to, their individuality exactly they they enter into trance and then they are written by the gods as you they say in Haiti or like in in Africa when they do their voodoo rites and so for us our emphasis is no you have to have full consciousness of what you're doing because what makes you in the image and likeness one of the things primarily is the fact that you are a noetic being and your so you logos. You're, you're exactly and so you you are to have full you cannot enter into a drunken state or a a state of of trance where you lose your your individuality and become subject to the powers of something else no you have to have power over your will and your your news has to is higher than your 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 volitional right you know uh self and so then your news becomes the yeah, the means by which you actually uh, enter into communion with divinity, but then your whole constitution, your mind, heart, soul, body, your whole self, then attains to their tr its true identity. There you go. So it's not adding. It, there's no. no, there's no addition in order to no. achieve. You don't put on put on a persona. You become your true person. Well, by by subtracting, by literally by by exact yeah. You 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 have to be purified of all those things that mar your true right. countenance. It's like right. remember how like uh, Saint Stephen when he appeared in front of the council, they saw their his face and his face was as of an angel mm. because he was. He was a deified, a deified person in Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so they perceived that. And so that's what we're aiming towards, to extricate from us all those things that we have turned into a mask in ourselves. Nice. All those false that's right. sense, that all sense. those false ideas of, our, of who we are, the passions that, that bemire our, our countenance. Which are types of masks, like you said. Exactly. That's right. That's and then right. we take that off to the process of purification, prayer, and uh, uh, partaking of the mysteries of Christ. And then in that, we then attain to our true likeness to divinity, mm -hmm. to God. 
mm-hmm. and then we we no longer were a mask we are in 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 ontological fullness rather than a shell of our true selves so we're going to end right now but i just want to say something about what you just said because <laughs> it's heavy things lightly on this podcast <laughs> the way you move through the old world and into the the orthodox or the christian world i want to move it we'll do another whole other hour if we do but we're not okay. going to move it into the the modern world okay everything you just said is potentially the most magnificent beautiful thing you've ever heard about a human being being totally right stripped and then deified you know? For moderns, though, it's gobbledygook, man. Just wear the mask to keep the, keep the bugs out. <laughs> and so how, how does that become beautiful? How does that become an aesthetic? I actually think it's devoid of the potential for aesthetics, it, for a beauty. Right. No, it's, right, it, it, right. I, I, no, I'm going to be hard on, on the modern uh, moment. Uh, mindset, yeah. How does that even have the potential for beauty? If there's well, no layers of divinity within anything and everything right. is actually what it looks like, it's a practical cloth on your face for bugs. Really? Yeah, and that's all it is. Is is pretty is pretty lame. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 <laughs> so, well, right. I mean, listen, I mean, I got you, know, you the fair, the fair monk to be kind. I can't well, go there. This is where well, I get. Because I mean, you're like you're saying it, it like how, where, we encounter the beauty of another person in their totality through their countenance through their face you you block that then you are you're short circuiting access to the depths of humanity and so if there is might, such a depth well but that's the key the key is that that's the key is that if you are already by default functioning as if there isn't then you're not going to care. Which makes the mask a much more a potential, a, a thing you could do yeah. more often and, and yeah. forever. Yeah. This yeah. is a little yeah. bit interesting, right? Because, you know, in Asia, well, at least in China, which is uh, national atheism, people forget that. The, the Chinese aren't practicing many um, sort of spiritual things. They've got been wearing masks since like 203. They just walk around with masks all day. Yeah. Now, not yeah. everybody, and I know in the countryside it's different, but this is pretty intense to me. That's, yeah. that's a pretty intense narrative. I've been wearing a mask. My, my I wore ma- masks before my kids were born, and now they wear masks. Like, whoa. Yeah. That's, yeah. Not, that's not changing on ont- Antos. That's not ontologically um, um degrading <laughs> <laughs> or, impactful. Or, or impactful right right i mean it, it, yeah it, it could it could more and more be so i mean if you know it, like i think if you don't if you don't if you don't um if you don't if you if you fail to see it within the larger that's the uh, great fear, like framework. you meant, you touched yeah. on earlier. This is the fear, right? Yeah. There's danger on both sides. Truth and love. One is, yeah, you got it all right, and then you're a jerk to everybody who's got right. it wrong. And then right. love everything sentimental and just cover your face right. for the next t- 15 years because I don't want to make anybody sad. So Yeah, right, right. Tough. So Yeah, it is a tough one. But I think it's 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 a good thing that, you know, to to ponder. I mean, I think is and I'm glad that you actually um decided to do this because I'm glad uh, it is something is it something that like um uh perhaps it doesn't really get discussed open as much as it probably should in not terms this of way like not, not this, this way, way. No, not no, this not way. in in terms of it's like actual like connection to yeah. to larger historical cultural yeah. dimensions yeah. you know and 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 uh, worldview dimensions you know of our ideas about who we are as human beings and our access to the sacred mm-hmm. and you know how uh, something as seemingly as insignificant as we're in a mass actually touches and all that yeah. well i got you on here for that because what you're going to do and everything you do at least when we talk on camera and off is the aesthetic is the pursuit of the beauty it always it always bores through into your all your conversations like it's it, it's funny it's like the words are about one thing but they're inevitably about what is beauty 
Exactly. And man, is that that's refreshing and fulfilling. So I, I wanted to share that with people who listen to our podcast. And also Father Likes First Things Foundation. So there's our pitch. That's that's right. So uh, keep on doing your work, John. Right, and, John, you know, part of what you're doing, like you were, we were saying actually before, oh. before uh, we started recording, part of the process of the First Things Foundation is to help the individual who is engaging in helping out the you know the various contexts that you're working with mm -hmm. is to help themselves to to come to a realization of who they truly are and to actually learn or discover that they're wearing more masks than they <laughs> think they were this is it. <laughs> and so this is this is that's a lesson for all of us and that's actually what we as human beings are actually working through to discover who we truly are in in Man. a larger in a larger sense rather than just our mere selfishness so yeah that is the end because that is making me feel great and i don't want to keep going and ruin it that was great uh and also i hope true i don't hope i saw it i've, I've seen it often saw it in myself so yeah go do hard stuff and then you will find yourself unmasked <laughs> exactly. no totally totally yeah so uh father thank you we'll see you later brother and uh thank, thank you, you Thank you for coming on. And Pleasure. And man, that was interesting. Man, Father Silouan, thank you to you, the victory, Father Silouan, but also to you, folks out there listening. May the Georgian Supra one day visit your house. And we can all say together, Gagi Marjos. That means to you, the victory. Watar is produced by Andrew Schwark and Daniel Paternos. And our pod is brought to you by the creators of First Things Foundation. That's right. That's us. That's a nonprofit. We live and work in some of the world's most difficult neighborhoods. Shall we say isolated, often impoverished. And we go there. We live there for two years at a time. We live just like folks live there. Simply mud huts, you name it. And there we try to find local people who have amazing vision and then just support their vision by bringing resources and the things they need most into their world. Share Watar with a friend. Hit us up with solid reviews on iTunes. And everywhere you get your podcast, your love for us allows us to love and serve others. Not from this. Hasta luego. Cambufo. Au revoir. Peace out.